Hello, I'm Jess Cravera with your latest news break. President Joe Biden is warning that the unvaccinated will end up paying the price. The president's comment came in a speech on Monday pushing unvaccinated Americans to go get the shots. In Kentucky, a nonprofit is delivering uh, groceries and other essentials to members of the community that cannot get to a food bank. The nonprofit Bringing Justice Home was created from the pandemic. And in Fargo, North Dakota, a convict committed suicide inside a federal court on Monday. The man slit his own throat after the judge read the verdict. Court officials tried to save the man's life, but were unsuccessful. And that's your latest news break. Now back to America's Voice Live. Well, in the wake of the CDC's new mask guidelines, I want to talk about Texas for a moment. Texas ahead of the curve, lifting their mask mandates more than two months ago. On March 2nd, Governor Greg Abbott lifted the mandate in Texas, and a week later allowed all business to open at 100% capacity. And at the time, President Biden called it Neanderthal thinking. Pretty healthy caveman, it seems. Because fast forward to now, Texas is reporting zero COVID-related deaths for the first time since March of last year. That's right, zero for the day. We'll be discussing this on today's America's Voice panel. Joining me, the author of The Most Hated President, yet the most loved, The Theory of Conservatives versus Liberals and the Hidden Truth Behind It, Carlos Spaulding. Uh, the former assist assistant, that is, to President Trump and former Louisiana Congressman John Fleming. And the CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Thank you all for being here. Carla, I will start with you. You know, the president was pretty vicious, went after uh, the governor of Texas and Mississippi at the time when they said, listen, we're going to roll back these mandates on masks. He said, it's too risky. Don't do it. In fact, it's Neanderthal thinking. Well, apparently these Neanderthals were outside in the fresh air and the sunshine, and it's worked out quite nicely. Your thoughts? Absolutely. I think... If anything, we should be praising the governor and at least finding out what did he do in that particular state to have such great results. Just as Florida, we're doing just as well. And we're very pleased to know that the governors are now standing up and doing the right thing. But in places like New Jersey, they're going to ignore the CDC's new guidelines altogether that just came out, of course. Uh, John, what do you think of that? I mean, the governor, Phil Murphy, saying, no, we need more time here. Uh, I believe the same is true in Oregon and other deep blue states that have had these strict lockdowns that have proven to be ineffective. In fact, most of the blue states that tried strict lockdowns have performed more poorly than those that behaved like uh, Florida and Texas and Mississippi and Oklahoma and South Dakota. So what gives? Well, masks have become virtue signaling for the left. It's a way of showing that you are a liberal, if not a radical left wing person. It has nothing to do with science. If you compare states such as New Jersey, New York, and California, uh, who have locked down and had have had massive mask wearing for months, and states like Texas, which by the way, I was in last week and hardly saw anybody wearing a mask, and Florida, where there was very few mass mandates ever, you'll see that the death rates, the infection rates, all of those parameters have been as good, if not better, in the states that were relaxed on these mandates, wearing masks all the time, versus those who've been totally locked down, destroying their economies. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, uh, Florida was so dangerous that the governor of Michigan, Gulfstream Gretch, took a 21-seat private jet to sneak down to Florida for four days, she says, to see it with her father. But, of course, the story keeps changing. So, Melissa, I ask you, if Florida was so dangerous in March and spring break was going to be this massive super spreader of disease that was going to bring down the entire country, first of all, why did Governor Whitmer go? And secondly, why did none of those things happen? People were in Florida. I was in Florida. Masks were nowhere to be seen in many places. It's turned out great. What do you think? Well, Florida is a sunshine state. It's a place that a lot of people spend time outdoors. So people are outdoors and there's really not as much of a risk as, as contracting the virus if you're outside. 
Quite frankly, I think it's ridiculous when you see people walking around outside in masks. I live in New York. People are doing that. They're walking through Central Park with masks on. People are driving with masks on in New York City, which is crazy. I think when you look at the death rates and the number of people that have had the cases in states like New York and California and New Jersey compared to Texas and Florida, it's a really a huge difference. And you say, wait a minute, closing down the economy and making people wear masks is not the answer. If people want to get the vaccine, allow them to get the vaccine. If they don't want to get it, then it's their choice. People are adults. If they want to wear a mask, they can wear a mask. If they don't want to wear a mask, then they don't have to wear a mask. Personally, I like the idea of social distancing. I think that's a great idea no matter what, even in normal flu season in the winter. But again, people in some of these uh, beautiful states like Texas and Florida where the weather's nice, they've been outside. So there haven't been that many people that have gotten sick and died, luckily. Uh, Fortunately, you're right about that. Uh, We're going to shift gears now. Topic number two, uh, Penn State University the latest to uh, virtue signal to the whole world, uh, is going to stop using the terms freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Well, the reason being they want to move away from a male-centric academic history. Uh, Another of the many examples where leftists have tried to change language in order to support their own narrative, no matter how twisted it might be. And it's evocative of, of George Orwell's 1984. John, we'll start with you this time around. I mean, come on. Or, or, or as, as Joe would say, come on, man, what are we doing here? Yeah, well, you just can't make this stuff up. But what we know is that one of the tenets of Marxism is that before you can change the culture, you have to name, you have to redo the nomenclature. You have to rename things in order to make that happen. So this is actually a very serious effort on the Marxists in this country, a socialist who really want to take us back to the to the difficult days of communism, what you see today in Venezuela and Cuba. And this is how you change the culture and you bring people into alignment is you begin to rename things and you make some things that were virtuous before evil and vice versa. So it it, it seems very, very innocent and benign, but it really is very dangerous in the long run. Melissa, let me ask you, are you offended by the term freshman or sophomore, junior? Does this, this offend you in some way? I mean, apparently it's it's offensive to women. So I'm going to go to my two experts here to, to close out this topic. Where, where would this be offensive? It's not offensive at all. And I think part of the problem is this is crazy. When the left continues to go farther and farther and farther to crazy town, it becomes harder and harder to take some things that maybe we should be looking at or taking seriously. Because the problem is they get crazier and crazier and crazier. There are some things that the left has brought up that I think people need to look at and take a serious and hard look at, but this is not one of them. And Carla, let me ask you this. I mean, what kind of focus does it take? What kind of discipline does it take to get up in the morning and say, I am going to be offended today? I I am going to be a victim today. I'm going to be put off. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be abused. And I'm going to find something to do all of those things. Because I look at the term freshman and sophomore, it's like, who cares? Honestly, who cares about these terms? Please help me. (laughs) Well, the first thing I would like to say is that that is just a distraction from the real problems that we're having in the United States today and around the world. This is just another way of really ignoring what we need to do. I am not offended by that. And it's just, they have nothing to do. They, if, frankly, I think President Trump is not in office anymore. And usually everything is his fault. Now they don't have the media <laughs> to, to, to rattle on him all day long. So they have to find something new. And this is what they're doing right now. Just a bunch of nonsense. That's how I'd put it. I think it's time to cancel the cancel culture and stand up to it. You know, as one of my more uh, outspoken liberals that I agree with on occasion, uh, Bill Maher says, stand up to that nonsense. Don't put up with it. Speak up to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Carla Spalding, John Fleming, Melissa Armo, thank you all for being here. Great conversation.